I'm Dr. George Flynn, and today I'd like to talk to you, yes, you, about your being a leader. And you might say, well, I'm not a leader. Well, I beg to differ with you. You are a leader in so many ways. So many people are watching you that you don't even know about. Maybe your family, maybe your friends, maybe your fellow church members, maybe anyone you work with, you're leading. Now you may be leading in the right direction or the wrong direction, but you're leading. So you've got to choose where you lead people. You say, well, I'm on the bottom of the, of the rung of the office politics or, or neighborhood politics. You may be, but you just may be the leader that's needed. So let's talk about leadership. And I ran across these uh, little suggestions uh, years ago, and I, I reread them, and I said, I've got to share them with you. First thing in being a leader, begin with praise and honest appreciation. Now, I mean honest appreciation of those you're leading or those that are around you. If you want to be a leader, act like one. Here's how to act like one. Don't always criticize, complain, or comment. It's three C's, criticizing, complaining, or commenting on something negative. Criticizing, complaining. A leader always shows honest, I mean honest appreciation, and they always praise the person for that quality. Now you may have to dig really deep to find something that you honestly appreciate. But don't make up stuff. Don't make anything up. Honestly appreciate something and be that leader that people are looking for. People want to be appreciated. And the second part of that is people can tell honest appreciation from just dishonest appreciation, which is basically manipulating them to do what you want them to do. So remember, praise other people and give them honest appreciation. Second thing is call attention to people's mistakes indirectly. Indirectly. A way of doing that. If you see someone making a mistake, you don't go up to them and say, you are making an error. You're wrong. You're not doing it right. You might say, you know, I remember years ago, I did the same thing you're doing, and here's what I found out that caused me to do something differently. Now that's indirect. You can say, I was doing it wrong. You don't have to say wrong. I was doing it that way, the way you're doing it, and I found a better way because of these reasons, because of this outcome. So remember, don't ever just call, nobody wants to be wrong. Nobody wants to be called out as wrong. Think back, think back to your grade school. Uh, okay, if you got a good grade, or grade on a report card. Remember you say, I made an A. I made a B plus. I did this. I did everything right. What happened if you made a D or an F? Well, she or he gave me a D or an F. They did it. I wasn't wrong. I made the A, but she gave me the F. You see what I'm saying? I didn't make the F. They gave me the F even though I was doing a great job. I don't understand how they could give me an F. So you see how people want to be right even though you see them doing something that will not get them to really where they want to go. Nobody really has bad intentions except maybe a few people. Okay, a few. But most people don't have bad intentions. They just have bad outcomes doing it the way that you wouldn't have done it. 
talk about your own mistakes before criticizing the other person. Now, that's what we were talking about. Talk about your mistakes. What did I do in the past? Man, I did so many bad things. I did this wrong, I did this wrong, I did this wrong, and here's how I learned to do it correctly. I did all of these things wrong, but let me tell you what happened, how I got over that, how I got around that, how I got through that. What did I do differently? And here's why I did it, and here's the outcome. And if it's a better outcome than you're getting, I think people will kind of look at you at that as that outcome. Rather than, you know, a leader, you think of a leader as giving orders. Well, leaders actually ask questions. And those questions lead to the people that are following them to come to a conclusion. And that conclusion is usually doing something that you might have said as an order. So what I'm saying is make sure you ask the right questions rather than giving direct orders. Nobody likes to follow orders. They really don't. They will, but they don't like it a lot. But if it's their idea, if you've asked the correct questions and they've come to that conclusion in their head, they say, well, we could do it this way. And it's exactly what you were going to tell them to do. What do you say then? You say, well, that's what I was going to tell you to do. No, 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 you don't say that. You say, man, that's a great idea. Let's implement that. Let's implement your idea. Remember, the leader always focuses on the other person. Let's implement your idea to solve our challenge, our problem. Remember, they came up with that idea because of what? Because you were asking the right questions. That's what I want you to see. If you're asking the right questions, they're coming to the logical conclusion and actually doing exactly what you thought needed to be done. Well, that's good. When the other person is wrong, let them save face. Don't take their error, rub their nose in the mud, and say, see, I told you so. You know what you've done there? You've made an enemy for life. They will never forget that. But if you allow them to save face, you allow them to say, or you say to them, I don't know how you did as good a job as you did because I used to do that and I never got that kind of result. It was a bad result, but mine was so much worse than yours. And I want to help us. Let's help us get together and get out of this challenge. So let the other person say face. Don't make them wrong. They may be in error a little bit. Do you know a plain flying from, say, the Memphis area, I don't know if we have a direct flight anymore, but to Los Angeles. They're off course about 95% of the time. They're not directly on course. They get off course and correct, off course and correct, then off course and then correct. They keep correcting till finally they wind up in Los Angeles. But they're off course a great deal of the time, then they correct, just like people are off course a lot of the time. And if you ask the right questions, you'll help them see how they're off course, and then they can do a course correction, and get right back on course, and be ready to have the life of their dreams, just like you want them to have, because you're interested in their best interests. And if you show that, and you ask the right questions, they will follow you anywhere, just as long as you're leading them in the right direction. Now, if they have the slightest improvement, praise every improvement. Be hearty and lavish in your praise. Praise them. Man, you know, a kid, you made a 72 
on that last math test. And you made an 88 on this one? Let's celebrate. Let's go out and get ice cream. Let's do something. So they came from a 72, even if they came up to a 76. You said, man, four points. You've done great. Let's do four more points next time. Let's go celebrate now. But you're celebrating their success, and that breeds what? More success. Because if you reward success, people give you more success. If you, you know, if you give them a bad time about failing, what do you get? More failing. But you got to help them and help them celebrate that success that they've had. Give the other person a fine reputation to live up to. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean your reputation? No, 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 no. It's their reputation. And what you're doing is you're speaking well of them. Say, so this is one of the finest people I've ever known. You're one of the finest. Per I'm talking to you. Okay, let's just pretend like I'm talking to you because I am. You're one of the finest people I've ever known. You're one of the finest people. Your actions, your challenges that you've met, the things you've overcome, I don't know how you did it. But you have got a reputation of being an overcomer. You've got the reputation of being sticking to it. You've got a reputation of being the person that you always wanted to be. You've got this great reputation. You got a lot to live up to because you're living up to your own reputation. And when you do that, people will live into this vision that they have of themselves as being honest, loyal, trustworthy. They'll live into that vision. Now, you and I know they may not be there right now, but you talking to them and you giving them that reputation, they will begin to see it. And when they begin to see it, they will live into it. That's the good thing about it. You can help people be so much better. You're a leader, remember. You can help people be so much better by helping them live into a reputation. Use encouragement, and we talked about that. Make the fault seem easy to correct. Okay, you made a mistake. You made a mistake. Everybody makes a mistake. And here's how to correct it. It's three simple steps to correct it. It's just doing this and this and this, and you will have corrected it. Isn't that nice to know? Three simple steps. Easy, nothing, nothing to it if you just apply the three simple steps. And you come up with those simple steps to help people overcome the error. When they do, pat them on the back, say, hooray, have a celebration, have a birthday cake or a cupcake with a candle, and help them celebrate getting through that challenge. Make the other person happy Make it fun for them to do the things that you're helping them to do. Don't say, if you don't do this, I'm going to get you. You say, come on, let's do this. We're going to have a great time doing it. And afterwards, man, we're going to have a blast. I'm going to rent you a movie. and you, you can watch a movie or we're going to dinner or we're going to do something together to celebrate. Or I'll give you a gift card and you can go celebrate with your family your success. That will lead them into even doing better than you expect. And when that happens, you have become the leader that you were meant to be. I'm George Flynn. Thank you for being here. Glad you watched, and I'll see you next time.